Thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna start telling you like why I started this research, just to add a little bit of context. Uh, so I'm from Brazil. Uh, I grew up in a small-scale organic farm uh, that my far my grandparents owned there, and I I think that's the reason why I've always been interested in agriculture and especially sustainable agriculture. I got a bachelor's in agronomy there. And I also worked with Extension for a little while. And I, when I say I also worked with Extension, um, I say that because Extension in Brazil, and I think like in most of the developing countries, are more focused to commodities. So commodities, um, production, and that's all. They don't really uh, assist organic farmers that much. Uh, and also organic farmers in Brazil, they do it uh, almost like almost all of them do it because of profit because they can make more money uh, so when i got here last year to get a master's at the university of georgia and i thought about like why um why organic farmers here in georgia they choose to grow organically that that was like out of curiosity uh, something that i wanted to know and since I'm always at the farmer's market uh, there in Georgia, and I have a lot of uh, friends that sell their produce there, I, like, I made a lot of friends uh, in the farmer's market, uh, I would like to know why did they choose to grow organically, if it was because of profit or because of something else. Uh, and I engaged in a lot of conversations with them, um, asking a lot of questions. And I heard a lot of them saying how they wanted to be more connected to the university and do more research and have more extension agents helping them. So I, I know that there are some extension agents here, like Emily, I know that you were from Extension, right? No? Okay. Uh, but I mean, just in case, I'm not, uh, I know that this is more particular to Georgia. Um, Georgia is a state that it's highly focused on commodity uh, production. Uh, so this research is the first part of my thesis. It's about why the organic producers choose to grow organically. But uh, just now, last week, I just finished um, analyzing the second uh, part of my research, the, the data from the second part of my research that is with extension agents. So. It's, I'm going to do a kind of like a overlapping of information because it's hard to talk just about this now that I know the other side of the story. <laughs> okay, uh, so something that is important in this uh, research, I defined organic farming according to the International Federation, uh, like their definition, uh, mainly because a lot of the organic producers in Georgia they are not certified USDA certified, they are uh, certified naturally grown. That's another type of certification, I don't know if you ever heard about it, but it has kind of the same standards as USDA, but the inspections are peer um, reviewed, so you can ask your another farmer to come to your farm and they, you can be certified just by that. So just talking with the organic producers there, uh, we found that this lag between extension services and organic farmers in Georgia exists. Um, so the, this organic community is growing in Georgia. Since 2011, the number of organic farmer farms, um, USDA farms or CNG farms uh, have doubled. And there is this need from, for more support from extension. And just a little bit of literature review. So a number of studies have shown that um, in some places, this need is really perceived by organic farmers. Uh, they want to have more extension support, but sometimes they're afraid to ask or they think that the extension agents cannot help them. Um, so the purpose of my study was to find ways to help extension agents to support organic farmers. So how can we do that? That's a really big question. I had no idea. Like, should we develop more research? That's not really the point because we have uh, a good 
bit of uh, research in organic farmer at UGA. Uh, so we thought that first we had to target the organic farmers and understand their motivations to grow organically and also their challenges and barriers. Uh, I'm gonna skip that. Uh, so from the late review, we also uh, have that some tips for extension on how to overcome this uh, lack of communication with organic farmers. So uh, assess producers' needs and preferences, uh, build understanding, report and trust, be aware of the characteristics across the region, and deliver the information uh, in a way that it can reach uh, effectively the organic farmer. Uh, phenomenology, uh, maybe it's a weird name for most of you that are not into social, sh social sciences, but it's basically just trying to capture the essence of uh, a phenomenon. So you, you basically, what we wanna know is why do you choose to grow organically? And we are gonna ask you, what are your motivations and how did you choose that? How are, how are your uh, perceived challenges? Um, so we conduct uh, interviews with nine organic producers in North Georgia. And the second part of my research, I conduct uh, interviews with 12 extension agents. And just as a method of qualitative research, you like you 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 highlight like significant statements in your interviews and then you group them by codes and then you group your codes by themes and then you kind of emerge the essence of all of that. Um, so what did I find? Um, some of my some of the topics that I highlighted from the interviews, what the organic producers experienced as organic farm, farmers. Um, a mindset shift, um, trouble, challenges uh, with getting the certification, financial barriers, social barriers, um, human connections, how to um, establish this relationship with consumers, and how they experience. So how did that has to do with their lifestyle, with their ideological position and family background and land responsibility. And these are some of my emergence, emergence themes. Um, so the first one I call weaving the legacy. So almost all of them, they came from a family of farmers and most, most of them uh, from a family of organic farmers. So they already had the land um, it's, it's really hard to get uh, access to land in Georgia uh, currently. Uh, so these organic farmers, they already had the land and the land with no chemicals being uh, used in their land. So it was kind of easier for them to get the certification. Um, that's what, that was one of the reasons why they choose to do it. Um, also, uh, they revealed uh, having this childhood memory, so like I remember when I was at my grandparents' farm and eating chicken, chicken used to taste like chicken, now chicken doesn't taste like chicken anymore, <laughs> and some, some things like that. Uh, the second thing, uh, stewards of the land, so all of them said that they want to be stewards of their land, so they are really concerned about the environmental um, responsibility that they have towards the land and they said that they always had these feelings about like the improvement of natural resources and use, making use of uh, everything carefully and this kind of stuff. So uh, also I changed the names of the participants but just a quotation, I want to be a good steward of this property property that we live on, which is a treasure. The third theme uh, is philosophy of life. So one of the most determinant factors when choosing uh, why to grow organically was that they had this philosophy of life. So it doesn't matter if your extension agent is gonna say, you're not gonna make money out of this, you're not gonna be rich. Like 
I don't care. That, that's what I believe. I want to be a farmer and I want to farm organically. Um, so they wanted to produce food, like healthy food, and share that with people. So another quotation, it has always kind of been like my philosophy of life, and I would not say that conventional agriculture would ever have fit into that life. And the fourth theme, um, it's about the, the challenges that they perceived while uh, growing organically. Um, so a lot of them said that um, it was really difficult to get USDA certification and very expensive. So that's why they chose to be certified naturally grown. In Georgia, it, has, it kind of has the same impact in consumers. So most of them are choosing for this another type of certification. And they also talked about like how labor, um, the lack of labor, um, the, the distribution of the money. So consumers think it's more expensive to buy organic, but they don't know that like that the money that they pay for the organic lettuce uh, is spread differently what, than when you buy like conventional produce. And they also mentioned that the networking in the organic community. Um, was a really good way to share knowledge and to, sh to help each other uh, how to overcome these challenges. One thing that I like about the Certified Naturally Grown, that is the other type of certification, is a network that it builds with other farmers. There's a farmer not too far from here, and he and I call each other a few times a year. Do you have this? Do you have that? He helps us. We compare varieties of things and what doesn't work. The networking is really helpful. So with that, um, the essence of growing organic for most of the producers in North, North Georgia is that of a shepherd. So a shepherd is someone that cares from their flock and wants to do the, the best job that he can. So uh, being involved with organic practices uh, cultivated their philosophies of life and um, the, initially, the producers they chose uh, organic based on their unique their unique situations. For example, having the land or not, and the positions within the market. And from all those findings, we could see that not all of them are the same. So some of them are more strong connected, more strongly connected to this ideological aspect of the organic farming. And some of them, I mean, when I asked them, would you go back to conventional if things failed? They were like, yeah, sure, why not? So <laughs> from that, we classified them into pragmatic or committed organic producers, being like the committed producers, those ones that do that because of their philosophy of life, and the pragmatic uh, organic producers, the, the ones that also have this philosophy of life. They think that's the right way, but they would do conventional if they needed. And we decided to do this classification um, for the purpose of trying to target um, extension efforts more, um, really trying to understand how extension can better attend these organic producers because you're gonna have to, to choose different approaches from each kind of producer. Uh, for example, from one, one of the interviews that I had with extension agents, uh, they were telling how difficult they think it is to, to deal with these uh, committed organic producers, the ones that do it because of a philosophy of life, because they feel that if anything they tell them, like you cannot do this here, it's gonna turn them off. And this kind of a kind of creates um, this image about extension that extension don't want to help them. That extension is only putting efforts towards big egg. So that's been that's is the, that's the challenge um, in Georgia um, now with the the second part of the, my my research. We're gonna create a model for extension, so to help them create this um, communi better communication with organic farmers. And that's it.
did bring it up. Bring it up. Um, did you have any uh, indication of race, and was race an impact on, on on how people were treated, or, or did any difference? Did you have difference in race in your sample, and then were they treated different by extension to any of your knowledge? Um, not really. That that wasn't really a factor. But now okay, that you there, were there black, different people of different race in your yeah, sample? there were yeah. Uh, but we didn't uh, notice any, any no. But now that you're saying, I remember one of my one of the quotations that I have. It's one of the producers saying that he never had trouble to like reach out to consumers, and when he started like his business, uh, he would go to to consumers and try to spread his work. And then he mentioned maybe he was lucky because he's a white man. And he doesn't know what would be if that was not the case. Thank you. Um, I, I thought it was really interesting how you separated the two into two committed and, and pragmatic and um, evaluated me in that way. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if uh, within your sample, were you looking at uh, producers that were using um, hydroponic, aquaponic, or containerized systems, or were they all soil based? And so, um, did you find differences in um, uh, between those those two categories of, mm -hmm. of committed and pragmatic? Um, yeah, um, I hope I I know that I didn't have a lot of time to explain all of this in detail, but it is it is really interesting, and there is literature review in how to do this class classification. And one of the producers interviewed his hydroponics, um, and like the like for him, what bothers him the most was not getting like not being allowed to get the USDA certification because he claims that he does everything just the same as anyone, <laughs> and he can't get the certification. But I think now the USDA is, is going to include hydroponics, right? To do. Uh, so. Yeah, so it just seems that it'd be much easier for them to mm -hmm. flip flop um, from one year to the next if it's not working out for them. Mm -hmm, so I mm -hmm. don't know if they'd be categorized as, as committed as someone that, you know, if they flip, uh, they he, have three years to get back to where they were. He actually was categorized like as pragmatic because his farm is half of his farm is cattle and is conventional, and the other half is hydroponics. And the interesting thing about him is that he only reached out to extension regarding the conventional side of the farm. And I was like, why? Why, why don't you ask about the hydroponics, the organics? And I was like, I don't know, never thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> here we go, one more. One over here. Um, I have a comment and a question. So I, I'm not extension, but I do extension. Yeah, I saw you on the slide. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to kind of reinforce exactly what you said. I know that since I've been at the university, in the 20 years that I've been there, I've seen where extension, we just, um, the, the resources aren't there. And there's really a growing disconnect between organic farmers and the university. And they're not coming, in my, at least in my experience, they're not coming to the university for their information as much as they used to be. And it's unfortunate. I think it's a problem. And it's something that really, um, needs to be taken seriously and addressed. Um, so I was really glad that you brought that up. Um, but the, the question I had for you, I worked with um, a group of organic farmers, and this was in 99, or in the early um, 2000s, and we did a similar survey, and we found that the longer that they were in organic production, their reasonings kind of shifted. Like in the beginning, it was almost purely economic, and then those that were doing it for five to 10 years had you know, a different take on it, and those that were 20 years were just had a completely different take on it. Did you um, do any separation by the length of time? Yeah, I, I actually, um, we tried to, to do like almost every, everyone kind of similar conditions, so of course there were some differences, but almost all of them were in, in organic farmer less than 10 years, for example. But that's true. There's a, a lot of uh, literature review on that. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And also, the second part of this, this <coughs> research the, about extension, like the data from the extension agents, is really interesting. And 
the first part is submitted to publication the uh, Journal of Extension, and the second part is going to be published at the Journal of, of Ag, Ed and Extension. So if you want to follow up with that, I think we're going to get a really good picture <coughs> of what is happening there. Uh, I'm an extension agent here in the camp in, in Oregon, and I work with organic growers all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's, and I also lived in Florida uh, doing organic certification, and I, I was uh, had a lot of contact with organic growers in, in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a completely different world between here and there, of course. But my question was, when you, uh, did you do any quantitative analysis for the different groups that you broke up? And then also, did, when, did you do an analysis uh, comparing the naturally grown versus organic separately and what things came on between those groups? We didn't do um, any analysis and quantitative analysis regarding these producers. What we did was a survey with the members of Georgia Grown, um, asking about their perceptions on organic agriculture, and a lot of them saying that they would do it if they could get some money. They could get more money than they, than they get now. So we just used that to inform um, that we were on the right track to keep going with this research. So no, we didn't do any quantitative. And we also didn't um, separate into USDA or CNG for this research. We just considered um, following organic practices as a classification. Thank you. I'm, I'm an extension agent in New Jersey, and in 2012 I started what's called the Organic Grower Roundtable because we had this disconnect with the organic growers. It's been continually growing every year with, with new organic producers. And so I would handpick extension specialists and other agents that were doing work that was relevant and invite organic growers to attend. And it's been going since 2012 and we'll get, you know, about 10 researchers and about 20 growers in the room. And just, just by them being in the same room and communicating has really caused the extension folks to take the growers more seriously because it, it, they make a lot of assumptions about what these growers are doing and they don't realize how smart they are. So exactly. I wish I had more time to mm -hmm. tell you all about what the extension agents in Georgia had to say. <laughs> but it's really interesting. But yeah. Thank you so much for the questions.